That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. The movies. Man, that's where this country's headed. <laughs> and anybody from Europe with a name like Valentino or Chevalier is going to clean up. I think we better look into this here cinema a little further. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Ah, the Roaring Twenties, a glittering, light-hearted era of the Model T, the Flapper, Raccoon Coat, Jazz, Prohibition, and Dance America. America. It was the golden age of sport. Babe Ruth, Jack Dempsey, Gertrude Everly, the Galloping Ghost, Red Grange, Bobby Jones. Valentino was the great lover. Doug and Mary were America's ideal couple. Clara Bow, the it girl, bathed in perfume. Al Jolson made his first talking movie. Perhaps the crowning achievement was Lindy crossing the Atlantic. But all those spectacular and important events have nothing to do with our story. Our tale deals with another kind of plot. Time, 1929. The place, Osepius. Pleasure to be in Union Town today. Union City. Oh uh, yes, a uh, uh, Union City, Kentucky. Tennessee. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, now look down the road, and you will see the car of the future, the Perfecto, built by Mr. Lionel J. Forge himself, and in the driver's seat, the Baron de Paris. I dare you to test ride this machine. I challenge you to climb on board and travel 175 miles per hour. Only one dollar for the opportunity of a lifetime. You must not miss this. Only one dollar. It's perfectly safe, ma'am. Thank you. Two dollars, yes, thank you. Rev, one dollar. Three, why, sure. Oh, and here is the Baron de Paris. Now, if you'll just hold one sec, folks, I'll check with the Baron. Uh, uh, be with you all right quick. Vernon, you better not stall this time. How much you got? Shut up. You're supposed to be wounded, unable to talk. Uh, the Baron and I are going to test run down the road. Now, all you fine people, just line up and wait. I said how much? Uh, that's right, Sheriff. Keep them in line over there. Forty-three dollars. Say what? Shh. That's the best I can do, Bubba. Now, go on. Hit it. Take off. So long, suckers. <laughs> I didn't say it was a brilliant scheme, but it worked right fine. That is, until they got to Joplin, Missouri. Now, you stay with us because Vernon and Fontaine are just beginning their adventure. Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Fontaine Harris, Le Baron de Paris, by Ken Girard. Our star, Pat Buttram. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Now, it's like I was telling you, this scheme the boys had to make money, it wasn't the greatest thing you ever heard of, but it brought in a dollar or two, and maybe if things had run smoothly, they'd still be at it today. But that's just not the way life happens, as you've no doubt observed. It's great to be here in Poplar Bluff, Missouri, and you fine folks are in for the thrill of a lifetime, because here comes the Baron. There you are. We're moments away from the big event. 
Now, if y'all just take a place over there in front of the cigar store, it'll be all Jake. All right, ma'am. Yes, one dollar each. Thank you. Plenty of room. We can take four at a time. Uh, just a sec. I have to have a powwow with the Baron. How much? Uh, be right with you, Mr. Mayor. Seventy-eight. Complain about that. Get in. Uh, seems the Baron wants to check out the generator. We'll be right back. Adios, chumps. Hey, my money. Come back. Come back. for Ash Flat, Arkansas, never before and never again, that's for sure, will you have this chance, this golden opportunity to ride with... <laughs> Citizens of Kabul, Missouri, get ready for the chills, the thrills, and the honor of riding in the Forge Perfecto. America's future for only one dollar. And I seen you in Piper Bluff. Uh, I doubt it, uh, but here's a silver dollar. Uh, now go have yourself a dinner on me. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the Baron now. Now you all just uh, line up in front of the cafe until we get ready. I think we've been spotted. I knew this was a bad idea. How much? Thirty-eight. Uh-oh. Look over there. Some geezer is pointing this way. And that's the sheriff with him. Get in. Uh, 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 be right back, folks. There's <laughs> time, boys. Pull over behind them hay haystacks. Hey, I'm never gonna be free. Be a hunted man my whole life. Police, angry daddies. I'll be dead for I'm 35. Oh, that's great driving. You are the best wheel man in the nation. <laughs> Shoot, I bet you could get a job with any one of them Yankee gangs. Well, at least they make more money. Now, don't start that again. My nerves are all a-quivering. We got to talk about it sometime, like right now. Fine, fine. I can't stand anyone walking around with a powerful lot of suppressed anger. I know what that means, but I do know that your car of the future scheme ain't got no future. You're overstating the problem. Bull! This is the pits. We take in forty, fifty dollars every third day. Chicken feed. On an average, we're doing ninety-three dollars per week. Fontaine, this is a terrible scam. Even my cousin Billy's horse liniment does better, and he lives at home. I spent half my life in that dang car, another half running from the sheriff. Well, excuse me. Mr. Rockefeller hasn't donated to our cause. I'm tired of living like this. Did you have it any better at Vandermeer's garage? I'm thinking on it. Ain't you having fun? This is a slice of life. Fun? Sleeping in cornfields, racing around with John Q. Law and my fanny? I think this car is my future. An early grave. That's some thanks. I give you the opportunity of a lifetime and... Bull. Hot damn, I didn't promise you a tea dance. We're just in our startup period, just the beginning. We're testing concepts, marketing ideas, taking random samples. I got the big con up my sleeve. You lie like a rug. Okay, let's hear the big one. No, 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 forget it. You're not receptive. Let's split the money in part, friends. I guess the almighty minute this way. It's like... Breaking up the Yankees. The end of Ruth and Gary. Don't you see I'm worried? This is not a successful mode of life. Right, right. Yeah, we got a split. I know you'll be happier fixing axles at the garage and living with your Aunt Minnie. <laughs> I'll get an honest job clerking or selling shoes. Here, take the whole thing. We got two hundred dollars. How much? Three hundred and sixty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Well, heck, 
That ain't too bad for a bit over a month. Well, have it all. I'll start all over Well, don't, don't get all sulky. I didn't say I was going home. Well, you've been so hostile, I don't think we can work together anymore. Oh, sure. I understand that, Sid. You want to cut me out of the big action? I know you. I have not said a word. I got you now. You have hit on the big one. Take it all in the car. I just want to be alone. I thought you trusted me. But just like any young person, you want it all today. Fontaine, I am three years older than you. Go, Vernon, and may the light of a new day shine on our chosen path. Don't get huffy. I have gone along with the con, even being French. All I'm asking is, when are we going to hit the jackpot? Why do you care? You've rejected me? Well... (laughs) Okay, I'll ride along for a bit. Come on, let's go to Joplin. It's got to be better. Here looks like a real metropolis. Hey, look at there. That building must be seven stories high. Bet it's got one of them elevators, too. Hey, hey, Bubba. Hey, pull over, pull over. Somebody spot us? Hell no. Take a gander at that. Hot stuff. It's a movie theater. So what? They're showing a talking movie. <laughs> Big deal. Al Jolson made one last year. Now that is the future. Movies that talk. Look at that. Love Parade with Jeanette McDonald and Maurice Chevalier. A singing movie that will thrill you to the heart starring the international French star in his first American role. Let's go. That kind of stuff shouldn't be allowed. My Aunt Minnie says it's devil's work and all them movie women hussies. Yeah, that's why she's sitting in Dothan. No vision. You crazy? She owns 1,000 shares of the Auburn Auto Company. Reckon she's worth $250,000 on paper, and she can't read or write. The movies. The talking movies. Man, that's where this country's headed. (laughs) And anybody from Europe with a name like Valentino or Chevalier is going to clean up money and the women. (laughs) I think we better look into this here cinema a little further. All she did was put up $1,500, and she's a damn millionaire. Paper profits. It ain't real. What makes you so dang smart? I read, I study, I examine. If that isn't the most bodacious pile of manure. I read, we are poor. I study the roadmaps to avoid the police. And I think I want to examine why I'm still driving for you. Because you know old Fontaine is going to make you rich. (laughs) I am a damn fool. Head over there. We'll take lodgings at the Joplin Arms Hotel this evening. (laughs) Lodgings. I know he's going to get me hung, maybe shot. Accommodations for two. Perhaps you have a suite? Oh, but of course. The President Grant has a fireplace and a sitting room. Wonderful. We'll take your smallest room with two single beds. But but, but, but you just say... Merely checking, my man. Oh, yes, of course. Sign here, please. Uh, first, we would like to avail ourselves of your superb dining room. The Baron has been famished since we left New Orleans. Le Baron? Yes, I'd like to present Le Baron de Paris, the famous racing car driver. We're here in this beautiful city to give a demonstration of the Forge Perfecto. Oh, enchanté, monsieur. Armand Chevalier, le maître d'hôtel, à votre service. Uh, uh, (coughs) Unfortunately, uh, the Baron is unable to speak. Uh, uh, his throat was pierced by one of the Hans bullets oh. in the war. Oh, sacre bleu, pardon. Oh, nothing, a mere sacrifice for la belle France. 
I am Fontaine Harris, his manager and confidant. Ah, mon plaisir. Yes, and uh, perhaps a light repass? Oh, mais oui. Uh, please follow me. Well, charming. <laughs> Just like Marcel. <laughs> Is this table satisfactory? Uh, quite sufficient. N now, may I serve you a, a filet mignon, perhaps? Uh, no, it gives me a rash. Uh, uh, of course. Uh, perhaps a little turtle soup, some grilled trout, and then <laughs> my special souffle. Uh, we had that yesterday. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, how about... Uh... Chicken fried steak, biscuits, green beans, and a double order of grits. One portion and two plates. Mon Dieu, a disgrace. He is not a Frenchman, and you are a fraud. No true Gaul would even smell grits. Now hush up, Bubba, we're going. <laughs> he speaks. A faker, a poseur. Come on, Fontaine, let's pack up. Now, now sit down, Vernon. We are on the verge of a conceptional... Breakthrough. Oh, my stars, not now. I must ask you to leave immediately. Uh, you did say, uh, Chevalier? We oui. let's split. He's gonna call the cops. Chevalier like in, uh, Maurice Chevalier? Oui, oui. He is a 17th cousin on my father's side. I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> the same profile and the voice. <laughs> you, you really think so, eh? Would I lie? Does the sun rise? Now, sit down, my friend. I've got the opportunity of a lifetime for you and me. You know, the Chevaliers were keepers of the Queen Jewels. Now, I bet that wasn't the only thing they kept. Can I get a roll and butter? Now, oh, hush now. Uh, how come an uh, elegant man of good taste such as yourself is in Joplin? Oh, a temporary inconvenience. I was the valet to a... Uh, never mind. I got you, brother, yeah. Uh, how would you like to drive around in a fancy car, wear suits with vests, travel, become rich and famous? Next, he's going to tell you about the luggage with the stickers on it. Now, hush. I am going to offer you a deal that will take you out of this hotel and Joplin. Uh, pardon if I say bull. Amen. Sit down, partner. Fontaine has got a hot idea. Armand Chevalier listens. Do we get dinner? If the deal is good, yes. If not, the door. Armand, you are the man I've been looking for. I'm going to put you in the movies. We're not going to eat. <laughs> the movies? <laughs> are you crazy? How much money do you have? Armand leaves. I knew it. We don't even get an appetizer. Uh, now, 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 steady, big fellow. It was just a thought. Uh, mm -hmm. The poor one of that. Uh, I want you to become a talking movie star. Mad as a March hare. Hush your mouth. A star that never appears on the screen. Adieu, mes amis. Sit down, sit down. You want to be stuck in Joplin all your life, waiting on tables, serving fried chicken to fat old matrons? I can get you out of here in style. How? I am, as you say, flat broke. Because you are French and the time is right. Down at the Biograph, women are taking smelling salts. Every time Cousin Maurice looks cross-eyed at Jeanette McDonald. <laughs> but, of course, he is a lover, the best. Now's the time to cash in on your heritage. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Now, Vern, you figure in this also. Him? Le Baron de Gritz? Talkies is a coming thing. It's bigger than vaudeville. And you can get in on it. We form a fake movie company, sell phony shares to the suckers. We pretend to make a movie, but we never really make it. And Vernon pretends that he's a director. And our man, you will be the matinee idol. The new Valentino. And I'll be the producer and handle the business end. Incroyable. We'll repaint the car silver, buy new clothes, look like movie people. We'll get Vernon a, a riding crop. C'est possible. But we don't know anything about the movies. I don't own a camera. We don't have to know anything about it because we are executives. Oh, but of course, we go to different cities in search of new locations. And new leading ladies. But of course. Now, here's the play. 
I put ads in the local paper. Movie moguls to shoot extravaganza in the name of the town there. Looking for new female star. <laughs> Interested thespians. Investors may meet the producing staff. Name of a hotel and so forth and so on. And I handle a business and you two do the casting. You got it? <laughs> oh, I love to cast. Did you them. ever try for trout? They're real tough to cast. Oh, Vernon, you are the dumbest. What the hell? I... Boys, just pick out the honeys with the richest daddies and leave the rest to me. I will sell more worthless stock than Ponzi. It did. is wonderful, sensational. I accept. I will be the greatest chevalier of them all. Ah, uh, well, hold on now. Something's bothered me. A hunger pang. No, it, it's your name. I like my name. Not yours, dummy. Our man's. I beg your pardon. You see, if you uh, use chevalier, then everybody and his uncle will know we're fakes. Now, to pull this thing off, uh, you got to have a new name. Oh, 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 but of course, a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Again, my middle name is Henri. How about Henri Ford? Idiot. How about uh, Henri Garbo? Oh, oh, I always wanted to be greater Garbo's husband. Well, uh, just be your cousin and we'll do all right. Oh, I love it. I salute you. You have the heart of a true Frenchman. Uh, garçon. Two steaks for this table and a side of grits. Compliments of the house. Kansas City, here we come. When do we leave? Tomorrow, after the good people of Joplin ride the car of the future. <laughs> simple scheme. Set up a phony motion picture company, get suckers to invest in it, cast actors who didn't exist in a picture that would never be made. If not perfect, it was better than the automobile scam. But oh my, there's many a slip, as the fella said. Amalgamated kinescope, Dr. Harris speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. McCoy. It's a hotel manager. Uh, what can I do for you? What? How many? i tell you what you do. Uh, put them in the small ballroom and uh, give them some light refreshments, and we'll see everybody one at a time. Of course, yeah, you just put it right on our bill. <laughs> huh? Why, sure, Mr. Garbo will be glad to give your wife his autograph. <laughs> Fine. Right. Uh, no, it's, it's not too late to invest. <laughs> Bye. What is going on? We've hit the jackpot, brother. We're going to be rich. The lobby's just full of people. He says maybe a hundred or better. Just waiting to see us. Investors, mamas, daddies, future stars. I did it. I did it. <laughs> Mrs. Harper, my own sainted mother has put her life savings into this venture. Do you think I'd risk her retirement on some wild scheme? Well, I, I, I can't sell you that many shares, Mr. Crown. I, I mean, we're almost oversubscribed. And, you know, Mr. Mellon from the Farmers Bank and Trust, he asked me to save him. A, oh, what the dickens. You're here first. Take 20 shares. Uh, just make the check out to me. That's right. Just make it payable to me. $250. Right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Dow. And you have made the investment of a lifetime. Henry, will you escort this lovely flower of Kansas City to the casting salon while her grandmother and I discuss some high finance? <laughs> but of course, they come this way, my dear. <laughs> oh, ladies, it's a brilliant concept. I congratulate both of you. And now that you're shareholders, I can assure you special treatment. Henry, DJ... Uh, meet the Farrell sisters. We're going to cast them as identical nurses. <laughs> oh, the pleasure is mine. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> How exciting. Ah, uh, the uh, 
first weekly meeting of the Amalgamated Kinescope Company will come to order. <laughs> hey, this is real swank. I never had room service before. <laughs> yes, it is something one can grow to appreciate. Uh, now, uh, as president, I wish to make a financial report. Oh, here, here. Where? Mon Dieu, an imbecile. Uh, during the past seven working days, your company made the following disbursements. Ten dollars to repaint the car. Five dollars for new used luggage with stickers. Three dollars for office supplies, including the fake stock. Nineteen dollars for secondhand clothes. Forty dollars on sundries, of which twenty-five dollars went for gifts to the Farrell sisters in appreciation of their efforts. <laughs> the divine one. Do you know? May I finish? One dollar for ice cream. Fifty dollars for dinners. Twenty-five dollars to the mayor's trust fund. Two hundred dollars to the hotel. A grand total of four hundred and three dollars dispersed. All bills paid in full. That's a powerful lot of money. Income from sale of bogus securities. <laughs> five thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. <gasps> Say again. Five grand. It is not. Possibly. Wrong. Here, take a look. Oh, <laughs> I've never seen anything so beautiful. I went to the bank this morning, put the whole thing in cash. Yahoo, I can buy new clothes. A new car. Play the stock market. Champagne. Take the Farrell girls out in style. Maybe. Hold on, hold <laughs> on. Now, wait, wait, wait. I, I got oh. some good news and some bad news. We are caught. No, no. We are leaving Kansas City. Why? We got it made here. Boys, we've been here a week, and we made a bundle from nothing. We stay longer, they're going to smell a rat, or we're going to have to make a movie. We've accomplished phase one of the plan. Now we're ready for bigger fish. I told the manager we're leaving in the morning. Going to Hollywood, then coming back in a week. <laughs> Gents, believe me, it's time to move on. But where? Into the big time, where we can turn this $5,000 into $50,000. Continue, mon ami. We're heading north to Chicago land. <gasps> With all those bootleggers and gangsters? Of course not, no. I picked out a nice, quiet town just outside of the big city. Boys, we're going to Cicero, Illinois. It's a piece of cake. Andy Griffith again with the concluding act of Fontaine Harris, La Baron de Paris. Come on, it's all set. We got the best suite in the hotel. Henri, hand me my suitcase. Will now, you? don't bother, don't bother. They're sending a bell hop for everything. And they're going to park the car for us, so just come on inside. We'll go upstairs, have a little room service, and relax, and then commence operation. <laughs> but of course. <laughs> Look out! I'm going back to Joplin. Let's get out of here. Hurry, Fontaine. We're heading south. Creek. I'll catch you for this. What happened? Your Brian boys shot up the window again. Oh, that's the second time this month. I'll call the glass company. Gee, this is getting to be a pain. Well, what are you staring at? Oh, those are the movie people I told you about. They rented the St. Valentine suite. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> I'm Big Al Angel. Uh, I own this fleet, uh, this hotel. Welcome to Cicero's finest, the Hotel Hotel. I guess you met my manager and bookkeeper, Millie Hemu. Uh, sure have. Uh, uh, no offense, but uh, there's been a change of plans, and uh, we we was just leaving. No, there hasn't. You're staying. Uh, we're staying. Hey, you two, out of the car. If you insist. Yeah, I do. 
they're making a French movie in town, looking for new stars and investors, Al. Mm -hmm. Real interesting. I'm an investor. Uh, well, maybe we could talk a little business sometime. Sure. Hey, Millie, have the boys come to the Kit Kat Club tonight, about 10. My special table. <laughs> pitch a talking movie a smart stock option plan it sounds good you should have clean nothing a little phony al i've been doing your books for three years the private ones and the set for the income tax people i know a straight deal when i see it anyway you got to move part of that whiskey money into something we got cash laying around the office like it was spatial tissue okay if you say it's bona fide i'll invest Second, Lou is coming in from Toronto tonight. I got the whole payment here, all in hundreds. Well, <laughs> good old Lou. He's the heart and soul of this operation. A thief with honor. Sure, a regular swell guy who's getting $400,000 for his heart, his soul, and his crummy booze. You got the bag? Right here. A lot of dough. Any of the funny money in here? Oh, you can't pass that counterfeit stuff off on Lou. That's dumb. How about just a couple of grand? Al, we are running a legitimate illegal business. Gee. But the stuff looks like the real McCoy. We got to use it. Ah, I got it. I'll buy the movie company with it. That's dishonest. No, it's smart. Millie, make up a valise with $15,000 of junk money. We'll go legit with it. Hey, uh... Here they come. Hey, uh, over here, man. The best table in the house. <laughs> oh, Millie, get it. Right nice place you got here, Mr. Angel. The best speakeasy in Illinois. <laughs> Imported booze, real glasses, thick carpets. The dice game is upstairs, and the crap table's in the cellar. Hey, Charlie, bring us some drinks. Millie treating you okay, boys? Oh, real fine. <laughs> Terrific. Thanks, Charlie. Huh? <laughs> Here we go. <coughs> Nothing but the best for you. You. A toast to long life, fast cars, and wild women. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, Millie says you got a hot deal. Talking movies is the thing of the future. Oh, Billy, it's not that great. Uh, it's really a wild gamble. I wouldn't advise a man of your stature plunging into this. No, uh, we even have second thoughts about the whole venture ourselves. Oh, yeah. We just may abandon the project. <laughs> Talking movies, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best sales pitch I ever heard in years. You say it's punk just to whet my appetite, huh? <laughs> Great negative selling, boys. Oh, no, honestly, we, we haven't put it together. We don't even own a camera. And I am not an actor. You've sold me. I'll take 100% of the stock. Oh, uh, it's not for sale. Yes, it is. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, I knew we'd come to times. How much? Um, $10,000. Sold. Mon Dieu. And just because I like Mr. Gabu here, I'm giving you another $5,000 as an override. Uh, for for the whole thing in cash? Absolutely. And hey, here comes Millie with your money. Here, take it. It ain't right, Al. I, uh, <laughs> take a look. Uh, you want to count it? Uh, no, I'll take your word. Wonderful. How about a toast to the new partnership? I'm not thirsty. Drink. It might change your mood. It's your Ryan gang. Run! They got big out. Our money. What the hell with the money? Let's scram. Here, here, take this. That's not our money. Take it, take it. Follow me. There's a back door. Where's the car? Down here. We'll head west. Come on, hurry. Oh, we made it. Pull 
all over. Uh, I, I want to catch my breath. Where are we? On the road to Aurora. We're going to her to Iowa. Well, we can't go back. Uh, sorry, fellas. But our money. <sighs> the Kansas City investment. In the hotel room. Oh, dang it. Broke again. <sighs> Is he come? Is he go? Uh, C'est triste. I got some money. Oh, thank you, Millie, but you keep it. Uh, you see, this here uh, movie thing, it was a scam. Uh, there wasn't any picture. The stock was worthless. It was just a con. Just a... <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> you, you ain't mad? No. <laughs> I was going to pay you off in counterfeit money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Conned by a con man. But we're not broke. I took Al's bootlegging money when we left the club. Take a gander. Glory be. Is it real? Good as gold. Uh, uh, how much? Four hundred thousand dollars. Oh, Henri's passed out. Since Al wanted to cheat you, I think it only fair to keep the money. We'll split it four ways. But I'll handle the account. Yes, ma'am, and I nominate you as treasurer. Let's get out of here, huh? Right, Bubba. How about heading west uh, to California? Sounds good, huh? What about Los Angeles? The climate could cure my asthma. <clears throat> sure beats Cicero. <laughs> and we need a bunch of miles between us and them Yankee gangsters. All right, hit it, Vernon. Just head west. Come on, boy, shake a leg. Move this car. Oh, we're really millionaires? No, we're hundred thousandaires. <laughs> the millions are next. Now, let's get. Yeah, step on it. Uh, can I say something as one hundred thousandaire to another? Yeah. Let's refund the money to the people in Kansas City, please. It'd make me feel better. Well, why not? <laughs> it's a right nice gesture. When we get to Los Angeles, I'll send the mayor a money order for the whole thing, and then some, like a, a special dividend. Yeah! Oh, well, that clears the line. Let's go. Hollywood, here we come. And this is only the beginning. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Fontaine Harris, Le Baron de Paris, was written by Ken Gerard, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our star was Pat Buttram. Also heard were Barney Phillips, Shepard Menken, Sandra Gould, Dawes Butler, and Ed Max. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.